just a little runaway. Forty-seven years and still I'm on the run, afraid of love I'm keeping God at bay. Just a little runaway. For my misery, always blaming someone else. I'm really into judgment and delay, but only hurting me and I and myself. Hello, everybody. 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 <laughs> oh boy, it's been. An amazing week of deep healing for me, um, and I can only wish the same for you. <laughs> Whew. And I think um, what I'm going to do today is <laughs> I'm going to start off with sharing a dream I had. And I know when I used to hear people say, oh, "I had a dream," let me share it with you. I'd go, "Oh." Fuck. <laughs> But it's a short dream, so you won't you won't suffer long. Um, it was a powerful dream. It was very short, and it was very symbolically to the point. And it was um, I dreamt I was in a garden, and the garden was surrounded by a fence, and there was an open gate at one side, and I I was tending flowers, vegetables, and pulling weeds, and being very specific in my function within this garden, fenced garden. And I'm going to cry. <laughs> and it's not for the reason I'm thinking. <laughs> At the gate was Paloma, my horse, <laughs> the love of my life. <laughs> and and she was wanting to come into the garden. And I stood up and I, I body blocked her. I kept moving and using my body to block her from entering my garden. <laughs> in the world, in the world of symbols, she was something I loved more than anything else. In the world of symbols, my body has been used to defend letting love in. So in my garden, I was preventing love from entering. That's the dream. And, and then I was guided in the, in the book, and in part two of the workbook, and I didn't even know there was a part one in the workbook, the lessons. Part two of the, of the lessons, Jesus has put in some, I'm calling them zingers. And part two of the workbook is where we move beyond words. This is where we move beyond the symbols of the world. And these zingers are really focused on being experiences. And there just so happens to be one of the zingers is entitled, What is the Body? And so with this dream of seeing myself as blocking love, that is what the body is for. That's what we use the body for. And I'm, <clears throat> oh, I'm going to be talking about a whole lot here. Um, Rethinking Sickness is a program that I did, several, many of us did um, in January, a seven-week online program with Zoom Rooms. And it really was to discuss the body. Um, and the title is a little bit, I, it, it's not quite what I would like it to say, because it really is rethinking the body. Where are we using our body to block love? And, well, I'm just going to start by reading the text because I think a lot of it will guide me through the rest of this program. Um, what is the body? This is from Jesus. The body is a fence. <laughs> Could that be clearer? 
The body is a fence the Son of God imagines he has built to separate parts of his self from other parts. It is within this fence he thinks he lives to die as it decays and crumbles. For within this fence he thinks that he is safe from love. Identifying with his safety, he regards himself at what his safety is. How else could he be certain he remains within the body, keeping love outside? The body is a dream. Like other dreams, it sometimes seems to picture happiness, but can quite suddenly revert to fear, where every dream is born. The body is a dream, and it can have some happiness, then it reverts to fear, where every dream is born. Every dream is born out of fear. For only love creates in truth, and truth can never fear. Made to be fearful, must the body serve the purpose given it. But we can change the purpose that the body will obey by changing what we think that it is for. I'm going to just another little parable that happened this week for me. There was a moment, there was a moment that I saw a situation occurring where I saw an undelivered communication that would have made my life so much easier. Well, again, it's everything is my projection. Everything is my projection and none of it needs to be corrected because it's perfect. And I had a mighty companion, and this is going to go back into the greater joining in the text. If you haven't read it, I strongly encourage you to. Because the greater joining is joining with a mighty companion that will not collapse into your dream of fear. And so I had this idea there was an undelivered communication, and I was feeling unfairly treated because everything falls on my thought system that isn't joy falls into the category I am being unfairly treated <laughs> and so I had to I sat with this and a, a mighty companion Suzanne who I happen to live with right now and I said should I make a correction to this and she was saying no because it has nothing to do with anybody else but you and I thought, and it landed like a ton of bricks. This is all for me. There is no one outside side myself doing anything. If I'm feeling unfairly treated, guess who's unfairly treating her, me? Me. I'm standing at the gate, at the fence, with the love of my life on the other side of the gate, blocking, body blocking. And I'm suffering as a result. Because I'm the only one that can suffer in this dream. So I just had to share that. Now I'll continue reading. It gets better. The body is the means by which God's son returns to sanity. Though it was made to fence him into hell without escape. And this is the body was made to fence him into hell without escape. Yet has the goal of heaven been exchanged for the pursuit of hell? When I start seeing all my thoughts as my thoughts, and I posted something on Facebook this week that was, a, you know, this has been a theme going on all week. Um, what I'm so very grateful for is that I see the value of seeing my th thoughts not the content of them. So what I'm grateful for is that I can see my thoughts. But it's now time for me to really see the content of those thoughts is completely meaningless. Unless I give it meaning. Going back to the first three <laughs> lessons, I give everything the meaning that it has for me. So it was really this whole week was dealing in this 
They're my thoughts. I'm the one that's suffering. I'm keeping love at bay by making these thoughts mean something. And it's not for me to ever, and I'm, this is really just for me, there's nothing I should ever be correcting, ever. I'm listening while I'm saying this. <laughs> there's nothing I should be correcting because it's all perfect and it's all for me and it's all guiding me home. And it's guiding me to the truth of who I am, which is love. And I think I'm finally at some point where I'm tired of resisting love. I'm tired of fighting anything. You know, there was also, <laughs> I'm not going to go into a lot of detail because it was a rather huge clearing on my part. I know I've alluded to it before in several programs. Uh, I had a foreclosure on my dream home in New Mexico. And I would refer to it as an illegal foreclosure. Well, as soon as I see anything is illegal, guess what? I'm judging something massively. So I heard guidance to, to uh, watch this program. Again, it was a movie, The Big Short. Um, I'm not recommending it necessarily. It was just for me. <laughs> and I, it came out in 2007 or 8, right after I was foreclosed upon. And I remember watching it, and I was furious, furious. Because the man who set up this whole... Uh, for mortgage thing in the United States, I made him as the enemy. And by the time I had finished watching this program again, and this goes back to MWGE, and I know David has said this numerous times, if you get hooked by a movie, do your work, do your healing work, and then go back and watch it. Does it hook you in the same way? And watching this movie the second time, I really got something was shifted massively. And at the end of the program, which I didn't hear the first time I watched the movie, this gentleman, Louis Adrianos, um, who set up this whole thing, um, said that he did have some regrets and that... Um, a year later, he really kind of pulled out of a lot of communication with many people and, and I think went into really silence. And then I went on Wikipedia just to find out where he is today. And that's when I really got hit with the download from Jesus of this man was my savior. Okay, this is the man that set up the whole... Thing that's set into motion, the mortgage is being shut down and me seeing an illegal foreclosure and he's getting humanitarian housing awards out the wazoo. And I sat with this going, okay, this man is getting, he's a humanitarian. And really what I saw was, oh, I happened to be collateral damage in a situation where he was trying to bring something to the light and I'm not going to go into a lot of detail with it because it doesn't matter. I saw him differently. That's what's mad. That that's really the point of this. I saw him as a savior. In fact, there's very few people that I would love to spend time with. <laughs> and he's one of them. <laughs> I get the gift he was to me. And I would willingly go through all of that again to serve. And I really am holding it in such a different place with so much gratitude. And it's like, that's this experience. And this part two in the workbook, and it starts around lesson 221 or something like that with these zingers that Jesus gives us when we're supposed to be moving beyond words. This is the experience of forgiveness. To see whoever I feel like I'm being unfairly treated by is actually the gift I'm giving myself. 
And I know the 30-day program, I just want to plug the 30-day program. It's a 30-day experience of unwinding your mind. And this is the unwind. You see yourself unfairly treated. You have an expression. You express that which you see in your heart that you feel. And then you take it to Holy Spirit to see it differently. And that really is the process. And it is a process. And it's not to get stuck in the, the making someone wrong or the expressions. And this is where 30 day program, I just, there's a lot of people getting stuck in the expression. And then you take it to Spiri or you do an instrument of peace on it and see where your part projected this lesson, especially for you as a guide back to heaven, as the, a guide back to the love and truth of who you are. And that's the whole unwinding process. And I love the symbol of unwind your mind. David's book it has a spiral, a big spiral on it. And I see the center of the spiral is we're born. And then we start setting up how we're unfairly treated. And it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And we have made a mess of our lives at some point. And it's really taking wherever we really make the decision to heal and signing up for the 30 day program. There's a lot of people making this decision to stop the process and start the unwind. And I say, if that's, it's a free program, just keep doing the 30 day. Every time it's offered, it'll take you back through this unwind. It'll unwind every single thought you've ever made someone wrong with situation that pisses you off, be it politics or wars or starvation or husbands, children. I mean, the list is endless. And then you start going back and kind of unwinding all these ideas that you had where you've ever been unfairly treated. And then you can take it back and own it as your projection and see the gift in that. And I know this is, we're talking advanced thinking here, but this is the process to get there. Start. If you're not going to start, you'll never see the finish line, which is who you are, which is just nothing but love, joy, happy. And you can tell when you need this, if you're not joyous and happy, there's something for you to, to work on. There's a lesson you're giving yourself that's blocking you from seeing the love and the body was made to fear. So rethinking sickness, kind of backing up a little bit with rethinking sickness, see it as rethinking the body. Where are you blocking love from coming in? Where are you using your body to block love? And, and it's a symbol of blocking. It's not like, oh, this body. And you know, if you, <laughs> you know, if you see this body here, this body, you may say it's obese, it's fat. I have my whole life, <laughs> even when I was 125 pounds. Oh, I could lose a few pounds. I beat myself up from day one for not having the body that I thought I needed in order to be a success in life, for me to be happy in life. And I tell you, I'm happier now than I ever have been in a form that many would people, oh, she's suffering from obesity or whatever the thought is. I mean, I've had them all. So, you know, I could, I have a long list, a lifetime's worth of making this body wrong. Where in fact, I'm so grateful to this form <laughs> for waking up every day in whatever form I find myself because it's perfect. It's my gift to myself that I still have lips and I have arms to hug. <laughs> and that's what this week was about. Huge healing. Huge healing. And letting go some big areas where I felt unfairly treated. Whether it was in just a simple conversation or was feeling like I was a part of a foreclosure or that I had cancer, or it's, I need to lose some weight or I have the wrong husband, I have the wrong girlfriend, I have the wrong children. 
wherever those thoughts come in. And this is, this is the presence. You can only catch those thoughts in this moment and grab them when you got them because that's your gift. That's the gate. <laughs> that's the gate out of the symbol called my body. And that's what rethinking sickness is all about. So if you have a block, no matter what it is, be it a foreclosure, a bad marriage, or needing more money, this is the program for you because we're going to take it differently. It's an expression. It's working with that expression with Holy Spirit and seeing it differently. Really seeing the gift that we're giving ourselves because any negative thought is just the give a gift I give myself. And it's profoundly beautiful. I better give the finish line here before I run out of time. You will identify with what you think will make you safe. Whatever it may be, you will believe that, is, that it is one with you. And this is a biggie. Where am I safe? You know, when I got cancer, which was another huge gift that I gave myself, my body became unsafe. And I tell you, there's nothing worse than when your body feels unsafe. And at some point, whether you're dealing with fear of getting older, fear of dying, fear of whatever, the body turns on you. And that's a good thing. That's where you can really challenge your self-concept. So I really see, I have seen this for a while that cancer was one of my greatest gifts that I gave myself. It's like, okay, are you ready to start the unwind now? <laughs> you know, whatever it shows up as, take that on. It's your gift to yourself. And it, there may be a big lesson and it may not, and it doesn't look fun initially. I, I know Jesus says this, it can happen in an instant, we can turn this around. But the reality is, and I think it is for many people, there's a lot of expressions that come up. A lot of rage, a lot of tears, a lot of beating tables, a lot of whatever. And it's just humble yourself enough to let that out to another human being. And the power of having a community for myself is I can express within this community and they're mighty companions. There is a greater joining happening within Living of Miracles because Living Miracles is nothing more than individuals that have taken on a commitment to themselves to see everything differently. And it's a big commitment. So when I join with a mighty companion in this group and we have a prayer and support line, if you don't have a mighty companion, call the prayer and support line because we're here to support you as mighty companions. We won't be con collapsing into your fear. We'll be joining you in finding the gate and seeing where you're blocking the love that really just wants to come in and flood you with joy, just flood you. So <laughs> your safety lies in truth and not in lies. The truth is your love and everything you're projecting is just the lesson to return you to the truth of who you are. The lies are thinking that you can be unfairly treated by anything, by anything. Fear does not exist. Fear does not exist. So if I am having a fearful thought, <laughs> guess where the error lies? It's not out there. Again, it's in my head. This is a big unwind. For those of you doing the 30 days, keep doing the 30 days. Because every time you do the 30 days, it's going to take you into a deeper and deeper understanding of this for yourself. Because this is where it is self-study. It's my mind. <laughs> if anyone could have gotten in here, cleaned it up and released me from the fence that I had built, I would have paid billions of dollars. Unfortunately, that's where the self-study comes in. Only I'm having these thoughts. And only I 
can be willing to unwind them. And that's where the rethinking sickness, at least you have seven weeks with a Zoom room every week that we're going to be holding the space for this unwind in whatever way you see your body is blocking you from the light. Whatever fear is coming up that you don't feel safe with, not enough money, the government's out to get me, I can't do gluten, <laughs> whatever it is, that's ours to unwind. Identify with love and you are safe. Identify with love, you are home. Identify with love and you find yourself, capital S. Not as, as a t tiny little self-concept, but as the truth of who you are and God knows you to be, love. So with that being said, I, this organization is a group of mighty companions that have come together and are coming up with tools and new programs and David is doing retreats every week, every week, every month and well every week too, Saturday mornings, join us in the chat room. Um, there's so many tools to help you in this unwind and that's what this group of individuals called Living Miracles is all about, to provide the tools that we're finding for ourselves in this giant unwind. Because that's all it is, is unwinding that which we thought we needed to protect ourselves from. And it's not huge. Once you get started, it is a skill. Because Jesus says somewhere in the te text, we've just become way too tolerant of mind wandering. Well, what we're doing here is reining in the mind wandering. And we have no one that's going to support any of our thoughts that are saying we're being unfairly treated. So with that being said, well, I have a minute and 37. I just want to take a look at all your smiling faces. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Bless you. Bless us. Yeah. And don't isolate. I think that's something came up in the, the morning program yesterday. Um, isolation is death itself. It's the joining. It's the greater joining. This is not just going out to the local pub and, you know, raising a few with some friends. This is really about holding the truth, holding the truth above all else, even when it hurts and it feels very uncomfortable. Express it, take it to Spiri, instrument for peace, see the unwind, see why you're projecting that, what you're protecting at your fence gate. Where are you blocking the love from coming in? And then we return home together because none of us are going to get there until all of us are there. And I just, I'm, I'm just grateful that I'm in this form, in this moment, with all of you, and with Jesus. Yeah. We are the gift. We just forgot. <laughs> Till next week, folks. I love you.